Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and the large number of requests for a Converse shoe cake has got it to the top of the list. So today we'll make this shoe and I'm making it in a fairly small size, it's enough for about 14 people. If you want to enlarge it you can just enlarge the template. Firstly print out the template and you can get that and all the recipe details on the website howtocookthat.net and I'll put a link in the description just below this video. Bake one and a half times the recipe of the chocolate cake in two trays and you'll have about half of a tray of cake left over which you can use for something else. And mix a double quantity of the chocolate buttercream recipe and mix that until it's nice and smooth. Once your cakes are cooked and cooled then you can level off the tops and we're ready to start. Place your sole shape template onto the cake and cut around it and then cut out two more so you have three all together. On a cake board put a small amount of frosting that just stops the cake from slipping off and add your first layer. Spread some buttercream over that so that it's even and level and then add another one on top and then do that again with another layer of buttercream and another layer of cake. Add your side template to the side of the cake so you can see where you're up to. Put the sole back on top and then fold it at the point where that side template is joining your cake so that you can cut smaller pieces of cake to stack on top of that. Cut around that smaller piece and cut out a few of those in that size and stack them up on top. Then put your template up next to it and cut out the shape of the shoe just going along the shape of the template there. Now when you look at it from the top you can see the edges are like sharp corners. We want to round those off using a serrated knife. Just shave off a little bit at a time so that you end up with a nice rounded shoe shape. And once you're happy with it cover the whole thing in buttercream and you can use a piping bag to almost colour it in and then smooth it out with your spatula to make it all nice and smooth and once you're happy with that just put it in the fridge. Now to make all the little details that we need, find two things that are circles in the size shown on the template and I'm using piping tips here and cut out the middle circle and then the outer circle to make the grommets for the shoe and then keep going, make more and more and more because we need 20 of these. Perhaps make a couple of extra just in case, why not? Roll out some more white and cut out a circle in the size shown on the template and then take a slightly smaller circle cutter and brush using gel food coloring around the top edge of it and then just very gently place it onto your circle and pull it back off and it leaves that nice blue circle on there. Roll out some dark blue and use the star to cut out that star shape and then very carefully pick it up and place it in the center of your circle. Use your knife to straighten up the edges of the star and make sure it all looks good. Then take some red gel food coloring and a tiny paintbrush and paint on the letters. Now you're going to need to look at the picture and see where each letter is in reference to the points on the star and that will help you with spacing it out and getting it in the right place or roughly in the right place. And then you can add in your other details and even finer paintbrush would help here because it's so small and then leave those to one side to dry out. They're only small so they're not going to take long. Now back to our cake, first we want to cover that top bit. So cut a piece of black fondant a little larger than you need it and then drape it over the top and use your fingers to smooth out the side so there are no lumps. It should be level with the buttercream because we don't want to see a bump when we put a side fondant on there. Gently roll the rolling pin on the top to smooth it out. Don't push down here, you're just gently rolling. Make yourself a cardboard support and cover that in non-stick baking paper so the fondant won't stick to it. And then place that gently on the top of the shoe and that's just going to support our tongue fondant when we put it on top. Roll out some black and then some cream fondant and then cut a piece of the cream a little bit larger than that top part of the tongue. Pick it up and place it onto the black and just press it down. Then put your template back on top and cut all the way around the template. Carefully lift it up and with the cream coloured side down, place it onto the cake. Now you want the tongue to sit above the top of your cake there, just resting on that support that we made. And the rest can just drape down over the cake. Use your fingers to smooth it down and then trim it down around the base there. 
Then on the edges where you've got it, just push it into the buttercream again, just like we did with the top bit, so that it's level with the buttercream so we don't get that bump. Now cut out the side of the shoe template and then add a strip of cream fondant to the top edge of it. Use a dressmaker's stitch tool or a, a um, spike wheel it's called sometimes and just roll that along so it looks like a line of stitching. Take an extra strip of cream and place it all the way along the rest of that top edge. And you can line the whole thing with cream fondant if you want but I just didn't want the fondant to be that thick. Add it to the side of your cake and again you want the top to come above the level of the actual cake and just rest on the cardboard and then it should come around and overlap the tongue part and come down the side but not all the way to the toe, it's about an inch back from the end of the shoe. Smooth it down to the base and then trim it off using your knife and then repeat that of course on the other side of your shoe. Place a strip of white fondant straight across the toe, smooth it down and trim around the base and then use your knife to carefully trim around where those side pieces are because it shouldn't overlap them, it needs to come off. For the back of the heel, just cut a strip of black and run the spike wheel along the length twice on each side so you've got a double row of stitching on each side and make sure the top of it is straight, just trim it off with your knife and then add it to the back of the shoe, trimming it off at the bottom. Now before we go any further, I want to cover the cake board. So roll out some fondant and cut out one side of your shoe out of it and add that to the board. And you can do this in whatever colour you like. I'm going with wood, but you can do bright colours, whatever you want. Trim off the excess from around the edge of the board and in the same way, add a piece to the other side. Then use a clean ruler to mark indents for the floorboards. Then I'm just using my knife here and mark out a long eye shape then run your knife along the length of the wood going around that eye shape and continue that pattern, making extra knots in the wood if you want as you go. On your template it shows you the thickness of the white strip that we need, so cut a long piece that's that size. Add a little bit of water to the fondant around the edge to make it stick and then wrap that all the way around the base of your shoe and just use your finger to smooth it out. Cut your second strip of white to the size shown and then add a really, really thin strip of black to the middle. You'll need a tiny bit of water on the white to make it stick but not too much or it will slide off. Add that strip around the base of your shoe. Now it doesn't go around the toe so just start at one side of the toe, take it around the side, around the back and all the way back around the other side. Now to make that bit that does go around the front toe bit, roll out some more white and using the end of your ruler make a diagonal imprint all the way up. Then turn the ruler 90 degrees and make imprints going across to make diamond shapes all the way back down that strip. Then use your ruler to squash and flatten out one edge and get rid of that diamond pattern. And then take your knife and make just a diagonal stripe all the way along that strip. Repeat that on the other side of the strip, but this time you want it to be a little bit wider. On the cake, trim off the black a few centimetres back from where the side black comes down near the toe there. Add a little bit of water to make it stick and then add on that front toe strip that we've just made with the wider pattern bit at the base. Now you want to evenly space eight holes for your shoelaces. And then so just roughly measure where you think they're going to sit. And then once you're sure they're in the right spot, poke holes into the shoe and then add those little white circles that we made earlier on top, one at a time, all the way up the side. Now for our shoelaces. Now you can roll these out by hand and cut out a thin strip, but if you have a fondant extruder, then use that. The one I've got, this is a really cheap one that I bought online. It's only a few dollars. And it's just easier to get the whole shoelace an even thickness and an even width the whole way. Squeeze together one end and push it into the hole there and place it across the shoe and then push it in on the other side. Trim your next bit on a diagonal and add it next to the side piece and then across and into the next hole just poking it in and continue to do that all the way up your shoe and then at the top make a long lace. Tuck it under the top edge then give it a twist or two and let it drape down the shoe. 
pinch in the end and roll it between your fingers to make that end bit of the shoelace. Do you know what that end little plastic bit is called? See if you can guess. I'll put the answer on the blog post if you're curious. And of course, you then need to add another lace on the other side. I didn't lace right up to the top grommet. You can if you like. I've just gone for the one below it. Use some water to attach two more of the grommets to the side of your shoe and then poke a hole through the middle so it looks like it's actually going in. Now for the stitching, run your spike wheel along in two rows and then take a fine paintbrush with white food colouring and paint along those rows so it looks like a stitching line and do that down the side of the shoe too. Then use some water and add the label to the side of your shoe there and you have a Converse shoe cake. You could of course use different colour fondant to make a different colour shoe. Put all of your requests in the comments below. This cake was requested by Sonjamini13, Muffin Girl, Havoc OG, Abby Miles, Starlights, that was a nice comment, Zoe Grover, Unicorns Are Awesome, Kobe Goldberg, Thitafa Tong Jitakasam, Card Making by Alex, Emmeline Toe, Kate Roberts, Rihanna, Ali, Marvin, Lou, Kirsten Mole, Denise Williams, Theo Tran, Emma Hallahan, Snow Whitney, Mia Saison, Deji Deji Real, Ethel S. Whelan, Luke Wilson, Simone Mess, Am Claire, Alsop, 3N, 3R, 207, Karen Ceratos, Abby Short, Chun Choi, and DXB, Yancy Johnson, Aileen Lamenko, Epis Jeepers 14. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Click here for last week's video, here for the channel, and here for the website. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you all on Friday.